Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E.H.E. the reason you see me. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Right. Welcome, welcome. Oh, we finally up in here, man. I done seen it on YouTube all year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Got one in here saying the same. You know, choke up at the mic. Yeah. I'll come back and do it next time. <laughs> You know, when I look at Houston, man, the sound down there, mm -hmm. uh, it was a different uh, time when when I came up. Um, mm -hmm. It was a, uh, I'm going to come down. Yeah. Uh, but even before that, you know, even with Scarface and him, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was technical and it was, you might can be okay if somebody died because you can listen to Scarface and it'll get you through. You know what I mean? I'm being real. But mm -hmm. then, um, it seems that your music and the way your punch is and the way your the sound is is different from others in Houston. Traditional, the, the, tra the traditional, traditional sound. sound. So how did you even come into this developing a different sound in, you know, I'm into it now, boy, I done went in. Wait, yeah. nah, nah, I'm going to tell you, you know that. I mean? That's a good question, though, because um, I'm from the north. That's, that's Swish House. You know what I'm saying? The whole, I didn't came down the whole, the traditional flow. But, I'm a beat nigga. I love the beats. So, I'm very Memphis influenced. Okay. I love Memphis hip hop. My favorite rap group of all time is 36 Mafia. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, with a normal Houston kid, the message he would have got from Lil Kiki, I got that same message from Project Pat. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, saying that first, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't drink or smoke. Okay. Never did? Never did. Never tried it. Really? You know what I'm saying? So, just like my brother. Y'all niggas square as hell. In a city I where- I commend you for that. It, it, that hey, you know what? I'm man. just lame. I'm just lame. Back you know, in the days, man, I'd have gave you some bubble gum. I'd have laughed your ass. Boy, I'd have laughed hey, at but you. Hey, but niggas tried that, though. They tried to give me one of them weed runners. <laughs> and when I ate it, everybody was laughing and shit. And I'm like, what the f so funny, man? It was weed runner. Everybody laughed. I really wanted to fight about it. I was of mad course. in the mud. Like, you like, you up, yeah. like, but I didn't even get high. Must not have been a good one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, you know, so I don't drink or smoke. So in a city where everything is slow, I'm the only one with energy. Wow, wow, man. Um, B King passed away um, uh, here in Texas. He te he's a Texas legend. Um, he wearing Texas legend on the shirt when he came and uh, did the interview at my shop. Um, seemed like every day it's it, every, it just man. When I got into this, I did not know that this was gonna be like this. When I first got into this, I thought everything was gonna be like just fun, and I didn't even think about people passing on. I've only been doing this show for three, four years now. And over the years, I've lost a lot of people that came by my shop and that been on my show. And uh, I hate to see this guy, you know, he was young, 39 or 40 years old. And I always, and I just lost Big D and he was the same age. Same age. I went to the funeral, the little kids. Man, this this is just something that just keeps messing with me, man. Like it's it's tough, man, because these are some good dudes, man. Walk like Jordan, I lost him. Strap, I lost him. Um Water Too Live early on. I didn't know that this game was like this. But then I know why God put me in this game. And it's because I always ask God if I could help somebody to say, what must I do to be saved? Some things we pray for, we don't know what we're asking. Because you'll find yourself in a situation where God will put you right in the midst of something that you didn't even realize you was, you, you didn't think of it that way. But I'm telling you honestly and truly, man, this brother here, I'm gonna miss this brother. I was giving him tough time because he told me on set right here, the one I just played, I never drink, I never smoked. And 
when he said he never drank and he said he never smoked, I, I joked about it because my brother never drank or smoked. I don't drink or smoke. I quit drinking and smoking in the early, well, in the mid nineties. No drinking, no smoking, no doing. I'm, I don't do nothing. But my brother never drank or smoked. So I compared B King to my brother, my oldest brother. Like, man, you, you just like him. Y'all weak. I used to mess, mess with my brother about that. And, you know, uh, I call him weak. Man, I was a meddlesome child. But at any rate, I did B King the same way. So I remember after the show, I took him and, uh, it was the next, it probably might have been the next week or so. I text him this text, and it's got this kid who they he accidentally drank some liquor. And when he did, he was so upset about it. He ran through the house. He was just straight up going crazy. So I sent that to B King. And then I caught him, man. We laughed. We laughed and talked about that because I'd already gave him hell on the show about him and how he's how he, you know weak because you don't drink and smoke and I was, you ain't never drink or smoke, you know, and I was giving him hell and man, that dude came to my show again. I keep talking about how people don't just show up. This dude showed up, man. He came to my show, took time out, linked me with Tyler Misha, his girl. She been on the show. I never did put that out because we ended up losing the footage and I've been, I collected some, but didn't get it all. But anyway, I didn't get, you know, like I said, I didn't get to talk to him right before he passed. I did text him a couple of times. One day I called him. We was, I was in the Kroger's and something in the, out of the blue, I just called him and started talking to him. I remember I was in the fruit section and I was just talking to him. And me and B King just rode it, you know, just talked and laughed. He was always fun. He was always laughing. He was always joking. You wouldn't know that. Like when I first was meeting, I didn't know what to expect. But once I met him and once we started, you know, talk, my wife, you know, she, she, you know, we, we, we love B King from the time. We, and I was something in me just say, go get B King, go get B King, go get B King. You need B King on your show. If you're going to do a Texas show, you got to get B King. I don't know what was in me that was saying that. I say that about a lot of the dudes that really do a lot in Texas. And he was a worker and I know he was going to always bring the music and I was going to always bring the interview. So this was this was this was how I was thinking. I thank God that he came to my shop and I thank God that he came and showed love to my wife and me and to our set and told us he watched it all the time. I thank God for B King coming in and, and when he didn't have to come. A lot of people ignore us and look the other way or whatever. But B King made show that he came by. He didn't go by what just by what he felt. He said he wanted to come do the show. It wasn't no hard thing to get him to the show. He was like, I'm going to come do it. I hit him in the inbox. He like, I'm coming and do it, you know. And he just showed up like the role and all the rest of these guys, man. And he just did it, bro. He loved. He was a Texas made dude, bro. Texas made. I'm talking about a real one, man. And I know we would have did some more work together, but just seeing his move and he talked about Ludacris and he talked about Juicy J being his favorite rapper and I mean, favorite beat maker. He liked producing uh, him and, you know, DJ Paul and Three Six Mafia and, you know, Gangsta Boo and all this stuff, man. It just it was just tough, man, to hear that today. My phone won't stop ringing. People keep calling, man. And I'm like, man, I couldn't believe this, bro. It just happened the way it happened. And all you can do is just love your luck. Like I say all the time when this stuff happened. If you got kids, man, go hug them tighter. If you got a wife, man, stop arguing, stop bickering and, and enjoy the moment because there might be a time when you might not get to enjoy that moment no more. So I'm telling you now, man, you know, B. King was a real one. And I, I, they say it was a blood clot. Um, they say, you know, he, but he was he was working on his health. And like I just told you, he didn't drink or nothing. And I don't know if I know he had I don't know about his checkups and none of that stuff, but I do know he was working on his health. I do know he was working out all the time. Just like uh man, Sensei, man, Big Pokey, he was working out, trying to slim down too. You know, people be trying, man. And I all I can say is, man, 
God is the only one that really knows. And I can tell you right now, man, uh, all I can say is, man, just look out for your health, bro. I've been trying to do better on what I eat and trying to make sure I'm looking out for myself. Um, been doing it for a month or so now, but it don't matter what you do, man. Get yourself right with God. Get yourself right with God. Spend some time with it, man. I know y'all think I'm corny for whatever, but I'm telling you what I do. In order for me to make it through the day and see another day, I always try to spend time with God, man. And like I said, you know, when the show first started, if you go back and watch that interview, the first thing I said, man, God brought you to me, man. And I, that's the first way I started the interview. And just was a dope dude, man. I'm not going to stay in here and act like I just knew him the whole time because I didn't. But for God to bring him into my life, for him to come from Houston just to do my show. Just he did that. Trilly Polk did that. My boy Banks did that. It's been a few of them that came. Lil' Kiki did that. They just come all the way to Dallas. Man, I come just to do boss talk, man. And then go back to Houston. Oh, I got to go over here next, man. But I had to come to boss talk. I don't, man, I'll never forget these guys, man. I love all these guys, man. I love everything that God has done for me. And guys, just always, like I say again, hug and love your loved ones more. And hey, man, all I can tell you is, man, he was a real one, and he was truly going to be missed. And I'm forever going to always remember him, man, and everything that he meant straight up for Texas and straight up for uh, just the music and the, the beats, man, and the, helping all these artists the way he did a lot. Man, good dude, man. I can't say enough about it, man. Make sure you guys, man, just uh, like I said, man, do something, man. Get in comments, man. Uh, give me a B. King story. Or just tell me that, you know, something you love about his music, man. Boss Talk 101, man. I'm going to let this one go, man. Man, R.I.P. B.K. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E. He the reason you see me.